Yeah, one might say I have a keyboard problem, but should one? Is that salad? Why is there salad? In there? Whew! So what's up guys, I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks and on the review table is the king of keyboards, the RealForce RGB from Topra. There's so many things to like about this keyboard, uh, but first of all, it's wow expensive, like close to $300, but you know what? Keyboard enthusiasts will understand and so for anybody who's perhaps thinking of going into their first mechanical keyboard, this my friends is not it unless you want to go to the highest end of the ends forever. Let's talk about this keyboard more in depth right after a message from our sponsor. The Z9 Neo by Zalman brings all the right features on a budget. With a large windowed side panel, five included fans, and an excellent interior layout with super simple cable management. Get it now, link in the description below. But the RealForce RGB, it has so many unique elements, uh, not just the RGB lighting, but uh, the whole body is built like a tank. And I mean that in comparison to my, to my K70 from Corsair, which has the aluminum body and it feels solid. This just feels like it's a hammer. I could build a house with it, you know? But the cool thing about the whole uh, keyboard is the variability in the actuation distance. So the switches here are Topra capacitive switches and being able to change the actuation distance from three millimeters to 2.2 millimeters to 1.5 millimeters per key is so awesome. So for example, the top row can be three millimeters, the typing zone can be 1.5 millimeters if you want that quick actuation. And that's actually a very unique element that's present on the Topra capacitive switches that are linear and require 45 grams of force to actuate, but it's like having three types of switches built into one. I, for example, love the MX speed switch because the actuation point is very short at 1.2 millimeters combined with a very light linear key, which is perfect for FPS uh, gaming and fast typing. So being able to configure at what point each key actuates on the real force RGB means this is a true chameleon within the keyboard wildlife. And we have dedicated buttons for switching between the three actuation points that are color coded. But within the software, this can be done per key to create your personal zones. And to complement this variable actuation point, we have rubber key spacers with an adhesive bottom so they don't move around. And so they come in single pieces of two and three millimeter thickness, 10 pieces each, plus a couple of wasped key spacers. They are meant to reduce the travel distance. So for example, if your actuation point is set to 1.5 millimeters, using the thicker spacers will complement the shorter actuation point because of uh, total reduced uh, travel distance reduction. But the problem is we don't have enough to cover the full keyboard. So if you were to apply some uh, in your typing area and then you won't have enough and they will not feel consistent across the entire keyboard. Now I have configured my typing area to be at 1.5 millimeters along with the space bar, shift and control, but everything else is set to three millimeter actuation point. So this means when I'm typing, I can be a little bit faster and avoid the forceful bottoming out. But you see the keys feel heavier compared to other 45 gram switches. So there is more resistance at that initial point on when the switch starts to move down. For example, MX Reds also require 45 grams of force, uh, but have a much lighter downward movement, which if I relax my fingers, the key will move down, but not on the real force RGB. Which brings me to the character of the switches, and they feel incredibly smooth after that initial resistance point. Uh, the rebounds is fantastic, they're excellent for typing. The heaviness element uh, compared to MX Speed or Red is something that I needed to get used to, but it's an awesome switch regardless. The one thing you do notice in the sound sample is the lack of any key rattling for the larger keys like enter or spacebar. And generally, I would consider this to be a semi-quiet keyboard. In the top right, we have volume buttons and media controls are spread through the function keys. Plus some useless window shortcuts are there too. But something we don't see often is a control and caps lock swap key for ergonomic use when control and other functions are constantly used. And I know that control and caps lock swap is actually quite common 
common among enthusiasts. Lighting on this model is fantastic, but only with a few effects in there, and uh, not a super accurate representation on what you select on the screen in the driver software versus what you see on the actual keyboard. On the blues especially, uh, also white is skewed again towards the blues. But the main benefit here with the light is the white backplate that helps to diffuse the illumination between the keys and not just shine through the ABS keycaps, which I'm happy that they're double shot, which means that the two plastic pieces are molded together for extra durability, but they're not PBT caps, something I feel many Topra fans will dislike. Also, the cable is non-removable, but at least cable channels are available for best routing in either direction with quality rubber pads that really secure the board on the desk with a slight angle adjustment option in here too. And lastly, I want to cover the software that is very good, first letting you choose the actuation point either for the whole keyboard or individually. The RGB section gives you options for effects for the three profiles saved onto the keyboard that's easy to differentiate based on the color of the lock LEDs. And then you can select which keys you want to disable during the keyboard lock function. And finally, in the last tab, this is where you select to save to the keyboard to remember everything you just done for the three profiles. Now, to be honest, I was a little bit skeptical on the real world use of, you know, changing your actuation point on the fly, but it's really a one switch fits all type of keyboard uh, and deserves a damn good award. I would say though, for the price, I would have expected to see more those rubber key spacers so you can apply them to more keys, uh, especially if you want to have consistency across the board. And perhaps an armrest would have been a really nice inclusion to have for such an expensive product. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out our uh, keyboard switches guide video where I test 14 keyboards and different switches and how they function in different usage scenarios. But uh, this is definitely going to be replacing be placed on my computer desk and used on a daily basis, um, not just for editing, but for gaming as well, because of that actuation variability per key, which is so cool. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think of this keyboard in the comments down below, and we'll see you in the next video.